I will say one thing before we start, right? A little secret, a little behind the scenes secret. When I usually record the podcast, I say to the guest, oh, if you say anything you, you regret or you don't want it, or if it's too personal, just say, we'll cut that and we'll cut it. Uh, but now we have uh, witnesses. Um, <laughs> So what I will say is if I say anything, because I'm not good at small talk, if I get too personal or you say something, you know, horrific mm. or anything, we should have a safe word. And so you say Titanic and then we stop. Got it. Got okay? It. Yeah, All that's right. fine with me. So yeah. let's... Uh, how, do you, hello, Will. Hi, Brett. Do you like films? I do. Convenient. I, yeah. <laughs> it's a good start. I thought Come it would on. be... I, yeah, I love films, I've got to say. I'm, I, I'm, I feel a bit fraudulent because I don't class myself... Um, as a kind of film buff. Right. You know how some people are like foodies and then there are like film buffs. And I just, I just like films, but I don't think I'm an expert at all. So I feel a bit fraudulent by, by being here, but I have watched uh, them since I can remember. So that's... Well, that, that will do. That qualify me. You've also been in films. You've been in a lot of films. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you're excellent. I will say that. I don't mind it. That is very good. No, kind. I don't mind saying it. I watched, <laughs> uh, and I also watched, re-watched a lot of your stuff before you came on. You do have range, don't oh. you? <laughs> you <laughs> and do. you have patience, sir. That is, uh, <laughs> that is very kind. Yeah, sat for, sat for all of them. Uh, <laughs> you, um, you are like a good-looking John C. <laughs> Riley. No disrespect. <laughs> no disrespect. In that, I, you, know? you can do <laughs> drama and comedy very well. Um... I don't know if I agree. To be honest, any comparison to John C. Reilly is like very welcome. I, he's a bit of a hero of mine just in terms of being dramatically and comedically accomplished. Um, uh, I, I don't know if that comparison is, is at all accurate, but um, I do love John C. Reilly. He, he appears later in, my, uh, in our discussion. I, Spoilers. I mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, I wanted, before we sort of get on with it, I, like, I just want, because it's rare that I get a proper film star, and I'm very impressed. I, I have can't a couple take that of seriously. I don't, I'm not. I'm not. I've got like one serious question, two maybe less serious. Um, let's start with a less serious one. Okay. I watched a bit of uh, Chronicles of Narnia, which you were in, and there was a scene, and I, and I don't say this as a joke. Like, I mean, as an actor, I've done some acting, sure. Mm. There is a scene where you are on a, on a ship and you are having a sword fight with a CGI mouse. And I thought, fuck me, that must have been embarrassing. <laughs> uh, on the day, on the day, it looks great, and you're very committed, and it's excellent. <laughs> but there's lots of extras, and it's a big set, and, yeah. and I'm assuming you're just going. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. How was that? It, yeah, it sounds like an acid trip. Uh, right. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, w I was sword fighting a, a CGI mouse on a boat, um, yeah. and then yeah, the sort of yeah, the, the, that is sort of um, to strip that back. It was a, it was a ship. Well, sort of half a ship on a gimbal, so it was like rocking like this oh, wow. by the side of the water, as opposed to being actually on the water. And then the the CGI mouse was being played by a a, a tennis ball on a stick. Right. Um, and on the other end of tennis ball on a stick was was a stunt man. Sort of, I think he was all dressed in green as well to be able to kind of CGI him out of the problem. And he was just sort of running around, kind of blindly, sort of poking me with a stick. And I was running around blindly trying to imagine what it'd be like to sword fight a mouse. Um, and at the end of it, I lose, uh, yeah, lose that fight. Win, yeah. I lose that fight to the mouse, um, <laughs> and uh, and end up on my ass uh, on a kind of wet uh, ship deck. Um, so it was it was a bizarre experience. It's one of those things like growing up as a kid, you know, I used to watch those scenes and not even really truly think about how they construct them. Just yeah. like, oh, the mouse is good at fighting, you know. Um, <laughs> And then when you do it and you see the mechanics behind it and how kind of painstaking and also awkward and weird it is, yeah. it kind of slightly ruins it for you. But it's also it was also really good fun. You know? Like, do you ever make eye contact with like a background artist mid thing and, and they give you a look like I'm sorry, mate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the time, <laughs> all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> here's the other thing I wanted to ask you. Now you are in what I think is one of well, I think it was very well rated, but I don't feel it got the love that it fully deserved. I think it's one of the best films of the last few years, and that was Detroit. Give it a clap. Thank you. Uh, I felt like inside the actor's studio then. And then you were in Detroit. Uh, uh, but Detroit is so fucking good, and you are excellent in it. And something I thought, again, that as an actor, is there's a very long sequence where you are essentially kind of torturing people. And it's really upsetting and, and it's long. And I was thinking that must have taken a very long time to film that sequence. And I wondered what it was like 
sort of between takes because people are on their knees a lot. You're over there, you know, it's all, there's a lot of sort of domination and stuff going on and, yeah. and everyone's very good. But I wondered like when they called cut, does everyone get up and go, you're right, you're right. Or was it like right. everyone stepped to separate, so, like how did it actually work? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm trying to tastefully manage the manage the segue here between fighting the, the mouse yeah. on the <laughs> ship and then, and then of Similar course. Films. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you know what? It was, it was, I think going into it, having all read the script and being educated on the fact that we were representing a real event in history, um, you know, a, an incident that actually happened and resulted in the death of five innocent African American men. Um, the the stakes couldn't have been higher as far as paying respect to the reality of the situation and getting the details right and everyone really being locked into faithfully representing what happened um but always while being safe and respectful you know to one another and and while handling the material um key to achieving that i think was prefacing the shoot with a discussion as a cast right. that we were all going to work as a team and that while everyone had to go to some very dark places emotionally and some, um, you know, some difficult challenges lay ahead, we had to sort of establish that there was mutual respect and mutual love and, and appreciation for one another. I think that was, that was solid foundations to go and play the opposite on yeah. screen, if that makes sense. I think had we not established that relationship and we'd like done that kind of maybe slightly sort of, you know, methody thing for want of a, a better or realer expression um, of ignoring each other and then meeting on the day and then acting, you know, hatefully and brutally towards one another. I, I, I don't think that would have been helpful. And, and I know that sometimes that is the process and, and people do go about it that way. But I'm really proud of the fact that I was part of a cast that showed so much compassion and empathy for each other through those those difficult scenes because um, it's an amazing, amazing group of, of young people who are, who are on screen and, and, and the best cast I've ever worked with, I think. And that's no disrespect to any cast I've been a part of, but, you know, it was, it was special to be, to be yeah. working with, with everyone in that film. That's lovely. Yeah. What a lovely answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From you, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you don't do method. You're not... You're not. You, you, we, were, I, I, we were talking a little bit about this yeah. backstage. I, I think we both have a, a healthy disrespect yeah. for methods access. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Am I, I just, outing you? I just, no, not at all. I just think when method, here's the thing, and maybe, and, and granted, I'm coming from a place of ignorance and, and comparably, you know, the people who are regarded as method actors or, or spoken about publicly as method actors are far more experienced than, than, than me and have been doing it for a long time. So I don't want to disrespect anyone. I may have fundamentally misunderstood method acting, but to me, if you're an actor, you have a method, right? In the same way that like, you don't go, he's a real food chef. He's a, <laughs> he's a real food cook. You know, it's like everyone has a method. And, and for me, I don't care what your method is, um, provided that you respect the person that you work mm. with and work around and you don't ever think that you're more important than the person behind the camera or the person, you know, running to get the, coffee or the, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think sometimes method acting is used as an excuse to just treat people terribly. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, did you hear about the terrible things that that person <laughs> did to all the people they worked with? What, what an amazing performance. That's he, was, he was such a prick, give him yeah. an Oscar. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 that's kind of odd to me. And I, I just think, um, yeah, I think you can be entirely committed to your performance and you can live in your character and you can do all of those things, but you should never, do it at the expense of how you treat the people around you. I think that's that that makes you a wanker, not a method actor. <laughs> We're only 15 minutes in. I'm already in love with you. <laughs> uh, I, may have, I may have established myself as a wanker for saying that, but that that is that is how I feel. Name names. <laughs> no, don't worry. Um, so, oh, Will. Oh, fuck. No, it's terrible. I've forgotten to tell you something. Oh. oh, it's awful. I haven't told you, and I should have probably right? told Well, I, I feel awful because we're 15 minutes in. I ain't told you. I should have told you when you got here because it's going to be a shock to you. I'm sorry. Right. Oh, how am I ever going to break it to you? Um, oh, Jesus. Okay, listen, there's only one way of saying it. I just, just to come out of it. Yeah. Will, Will, I'm so sorry, but uh, you, you died. You died. Oh. Yeah. 
How oh, did you that, die? That's what this is. <laughs> yeah. My. Why do you think I'm wearing an Undertaker oh, suit? Oh, I, I didn't see that until there's yeah. a big sign behind it. Right, are you wearing an Undertaker yeah. suit? That's a, <laughs> um, uh, surprise. I did die. <laughs> How did you die? I died. Um, yeah, I died. So I, I thought about this long and long and hard. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, um, I. Did a bit of research into drowning, which is oh yeah, yeah, go on. Which um, it's not fun. It's not fun. It's not cheery research. Um, there was funner research attached to, to this, but um, I heard. And Hang I on, I'm so sorry to interrupt. You mean research for this podcast? A little bit. Or for an acting job? Uh, no, 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 no. Like, oh, like, you thought I look yeah, up yeah, 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 which yeah. is the best way to die? Is that well, you well, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, good. I like that. Um, Do your homework. <laughs> and um, I heard that. Uh, the drowning, while while it is, I'm sure, incredibly traumatic for the for the most part. Well, I, it has its downsides. I, yeah. <laughs> I hear the like the the sort of the end section, the like the sort of after credits of yeah. of drowning, are uh, is actually quite euphoric. That's what I've heard. And is like maybe one of the best ways to die. Best high you can ever have. That Apparently. final breath. But who's telling that? <laughs> I read that. That's true. I did read that, but who said it? That is true. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Unless they did like a Ouija board afterwards and he went, it was fucking great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, fair enough. Lights back on. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, I thought about that. And then I thought about, I had a, like, a childhood memory of um, being uh, in Kenya um, when my mum was born. Went on holiday to Kenya and uh, there was an idea to go and swim with turtles. And I had uh, like, horrendous seasickness, like the, the worst seasickness I can imagine. And really strangely, even though seasickness really isn't that much of a, about it, it's your stupid land-dwelling human body going, what's this? And it's like, <laughs> it's fine. It's 70% of the world is made up of this stuff. You're just not, uh, uh, you know, equipped to deal with it. But I thought I was going to die. I was like, I was 11, 12 years old. I literally thought, oh, I'm going to be the first person to die at sea from seasickness. <laughs> <laughs> and I missed out on swimming with turtles. So I thought, if I drowned while swimming with turtles, and maybe they kind of like just respectfully like held me down a little bit <laughs> while I swam with them, then I'd realize a childhood dream and die of euphorically. Of seasickness, then drowning. Drowning with turtles. With turtles. With They're turtles. holding you down. What? <laughs> what? Just what did you do to the turtles? Or may, I don't, I don't want to like dive like the bends. Like, you know, if I no, swim no, up, yeah, I want yeah. them to kind of spare me of that. They'd so have to be quite intelligent turtles. But. You've gone for a swim. You're underwater. Yeah. You've seen some turtles. Hello. Yeah. And they've gone, get down. <laughs> Stay down. And they've held you down. Yeah. And you've gone, I thought we were friends. <laughs> yeah. And they go, don't worry, you're in for a treat when you take that last breath. Go, Wait till after the credits, pal. You'll love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, it's a lovely death, actually. So that's it, Peaceful yeah. when it's the last bit, but the middle bit, horrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you worry about death, Will? Uh, I don't really. No? I don't. No, not, not majorly. It's not an anxiety. I have major social anxiety. Um, rooms full of people being one of them. Uh, You're doing so well. I feel, <laughs> I feel safer with you here. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I struggle with anxiety for certain, but um, death anxiety is not, not one of them. Um, oh. Maybe maybe I should be worried about it, <laughs> but I don't swim with turtles that regularly. So. No, stay out of the water. You'll yeah, be fine. Uh, you do you think that there's an afterlife? Do you have any thoughts on that? No, I don't, to be honest. I don't, unfortunately. Um, you think that's other it? than that, maybe it's like a podcast with you. Maybe it's like another one of these. <laughs> maybe. Maybe it is, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so you think it's nothing. Well, guess what? Surprise. <laughs> oh. You're totally wrong. <laughs> There is, a, there is an afterlife, uh -huh. yeah, and they're really into film, which you kind of like. So, you know, it's all right for you. It's a bit annoying because that's all they talk about. Right, but, right. But um, there's a heaven, they're obsessed with films, and all they ever want to know about is your life, but through films. Oh, amazing. So the first thing they ask you is, what is the first film that you remember seeing? The first film I remember seeing um, was Hook. Yes. Um, yeah. Love um, Hook. Yeah, uh, was it? Well done, buddy. There we go. <laughs> Which I think was 1996, 1993. Less. N was I less? 1993, maybe. How old are you? Can you I'm, say? I'm, I was born in 1993. Well, you weren't a baby then. 
Were so you? So I think. Do you remember? Was it the cinema? I was no, I, as in I remember. That's the that's the first one I can remember sitting down and kind of properly taking in. You know, as a as a young child, but I think it was released in 1993. Sounds about right. Yeah. 92. I'm going. Anyone? No. 91. 91. 91. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, and I, I, I literally was obsessed with it. I, 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 you know, knew about the story of Peter Pan, and um, I that had kind of captured my imagination as a kid. And by the time I, I, I saw this, I had a sort of you know rough idea of the story, but this film blew my mind. Um, and yeah, I think I watched it nonstop. You know, it, it well into my teens, pretty much, just because I loved it so much. Did you watch it at home? With family, or I watched it at home, VHS. I remember, I remember the 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 tape. I remember doing that thing that everyone does with VHS, where like you you like you get on your knees and you walk on yes. your knees. Yes. To the VHS, th very seriously as well, because yeah. at the time, that's how you put in a VHS tape. <laughs> so no one questions. Like now with DVD, like you stand up and you like, you know, whatever, you pop it in. Blah, blah. But when you did VHS, you would just literally just. Uh. <laughs> give it a little spit and then you put it in and no one would question that because it's like. Uh, for the listeners at home, we'll just did some brilliant acting. <laughs> for a mouse. Yeah, so. Um, uh, and and, I, and I, I remember it well and I remember like Robin Williams being the kind of, I don't know, just the, the, the magician that he was and always will be um, and kind of guiding you through that incredible story. It's the most amazing cast. Dustin Hoffman as Hook just haunted you and also kind of like entertained you in equal measure. Um, and Julia Roberts plays Tink and- uh, Glenn Close is a secret pirate with a beard. There you go, yep. <laughs> Close Secret Pirate of the Beard. It just—it was just an amazing, amazing movie, and um, I loved. It. And I wanted to be a lost boy, and I, I wanted to like, you know, I wanted to be part of Rufio's gang and yeah. all that sort of stuff. It was—it was just—it was a beautiful, beautiful film. I love Hook very much, and I, ha I believe I have said this. So, if apologies if you've heard it on a podcast. But the thing that is sad about Hook is Steven Spielberg always says in interviews it's the only film of his he thinks is shit, and I'm like, you're wrong. That's no Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> this is really good. I love Hook. Oh. I think the beginning of the before they get to Neverland, that whole section, I think, is a uh, oh. masterpiece. Beautiful. I think, I think it really. That's such a shame that he thinks. Yeah, that. I'm like, what's your problem, mate? Yeah. <laughs> Tell him. Tell him when he comes on. Stephen, yeah. come on, mate. <laughs> Be proud of your work. <laughs> Why yeah. are you so full of doubt? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be all right. Of confidence, Mr. Spielberg. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a lovely answer. Did that make you want to be an actor? Did you? When did you know when you wanted to be in all this? D yeah, definitely contributed to it. That film right. massively. Um, I think uh, looking back, you know, some of the earliest films I watched and I can't really remember were like black and white cowboy films, which were obviously full of very problematic mistruths about you know who the bad people in America were. <laughs> and um, uh, looking back, like terrible for my education. <laughs> But I used to sit inches from the screen and watch black and white cowboy movies and kind of want to be a, a cowboy sort of thing. That was maybe the the, the first sort of influence on me, as, as poisonous as that possibly was. Um, but Hook, yeah, first film I properly remember watching, having a connection with. And um, Robin Williams has just always been an idol, um, you know, and I think the way that he goes between drama and comedy is, is masterful. He does it better than anyone ever. And, um, you know, I, I I guess I always knew him to be more of a... Dramatic, dramatic actor because of Hook, even though there are right, comical yeah, elements, yeah. I, I kind of always considered him a dramatic actor. And it was only later that I discovered him as this blistering stand-up comedian. And um, Morgan you know, Mindy must have blown your fucking mind. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, I, uh, I, I, I just, I've just always loved the man ever since. That's lovely. What is the film that scared you the most? Um, the film that scared me the most, uh, The Witches. Oh, I love The Witches. The Witches is right up there. Yes. Yeah. Like, to the point where The Witches, yeah, like, the the makeup, the special effects yeah. makeup in that is truly haunting. And and it was, it, The Witches was so scary to me that it, the, the, the figures of The Witches, the faces of The Witches genuinely haunted my dreams for, for a long, long time. And bless any poor elderly woman who vaguely resembled 
any of the because I would be I'd be in shock, you know, in the supermarket hours with my mum staring at a slightly innocent elderly woman, thinking maybe she's a witch. You know, that's awful to do that, but that, that is grandma. what I lived with for a while. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, poor Grandma Joyce. Um, yeah. Uh, so that that terrified me. I think the other one also that really scared me was funny. It was just bizarre to say, but Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. That is not bizarre to say. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. The bad guy is basically Jimmy Savile. The like, child snatch. Is- no, I don't mean to to be that. Like, I don't mean that cheaply. It it, it literally is. <laughs> it dresses the same. The thing is, yeah. it's terrifying. Absolutely, ter- the, the the bad guy is a ch- kitty fiddler. What's he called? Yeah, child, child snatcher. Child snatcher. Child I snatcher. Mean, what it was wa- going on? Yeah. No, a hundred percent. That was that was one of uh, the scarier films. I, yeah. Alongside witches, I think he also haunted my dream. And it's one of those characters that you bring up with lots of people around you know, who maybe belong to my generation and watch it at the same time, and they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, the child snatcher, I think, I, I, I imagine is, has appeared in a few, <laughs> few people's nightmares. He was scary. Anyone here scared of child catcher? Yeah, yeah look, okay, they're they, even, yeah. not even like, happy about it. Like, no. Properly like, traumatized. Yeah. Yeah. Like, thanks, I got to sleep tonight. <laughs> like, sorry, yeah. Great answer. And also, the witches, it's Nicholas Rogue, who made what I consider to be mm, top three greatest films of all time, Don't Look Now. Thank you. Oh. Thank you for that's, coming. That's in your top three. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, right. What is the film that made you cry the most? Um, Philadelphia. Oh, lovely. Made me bawl my eyes out. Yeah. Um, really, really made me cry a lot. Um, did you watch it? How, when did you watch it? I think I watched, I think my older sister, Jo, literally said, Watch this film, you'll cry a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And like, for some reason, as quite a... You thought, that sounds fine. Yeah, yeah, as quite a young kid, I signed up for that. Um, so, you know, be prepared, this, this one will make you cry. Watch it, and it, boy, did it. It was just so upsetting. And I think also so much of it, um, you know, focuses on the, the, the miseducation that leads to a lack of empathy surrounding people who are diagnosed with AIDS, particularly at that time. I certainly didn't. No, and it, it's presented in a quite a sort of simplistic way and in a very kind of in a way that really appeals to your humanity and your your sort of compassion by saying, here is someone with an ailment through no fault of their own, through the choices that they are free to make in their life. They've they've been given this this deadly thing to, to cope with. And are you going to be one of those people that is like compassionate and, and understanding of that? Or are you going to slam the door in their face and cast them out as a leper? And like watching him come into contact with people while they wrestle with that decision and some of the harshness he's met with is just like, it tears you apart. And um, Denzel Washington's growth as mm. well, you know, a, a around understanding the, um, what what Tom Hanks's character is going through is is uh, is amazing. It, um, it unfurls in a really incredible, natural, beautiful way. And it's got that scene where he does the opera, which sort of I always think is an interesting like. It's so on the edge of being any more. <laughs> that's a really embarrassing scene. Yeah. But they pull it off. It's really moving and stuff. But it's so. Full With that like high yeah, angle yeah, yeah. rotating camera move. Yeah. yeah. All in red and stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, it's so true. And I think also there's something about, I mean, I can't sing a note, but there's something about opera, which I never listen to. Mm. If I'm feeling a little bit emotional, maybe a couple too many glasses of red wine, someone sticks on some opera, I immediately <laughs> start welling up. And I don't even know why. Because um, of Tom Hanks. But it's because of Tom Hanks. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a beautiful film and it made me cry my eyes out. Lovely answer. You're doing very well so far. I'm a bit nervous. As I say, I'm fraudulent. I haven't seen all the films, so I'm a bit nervous. Well, so far you've seen <laughs> uh, three, and that's uh, that's in that's uh, so far enough. If yeah, you've got almost as many as I've been in, actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, what is the film that is sort of meant to be bad? Most people say this is bad. Critically, it's not liked, mm. but you're like, fuck you. This is the best. What is the film you love, even though many don't? Okay. I had, <laughs> I think I had a number of these okay. on my list. Um, you're an incredibly funny man and, and, a, and, a, and okay. a certified professionally funny man on top of being a, 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 an actor. I think that- Kiss me. Oh, I sorry. Th- <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I think- Sorry. You're right. Sorry. Did you- Sorry. Someone shout that Sorry, that was, I don't know what that was. Yeah. Buddy. Uh. That's right. <laughs> 
So, so yeah. I know that you empathise with how frustrating it is when critics get a little bit snooty just because something's a comedy. Oh yeah, critics hate comedies. Do you know I what I mean? Them. It's it's yeah. mad, and I also get particularly upset when there are incredible comedic performances that never get recognised at the big fancy award shows where they give out the statues and stuff. Yeah. So, my f- not that I'm saying this is you know an Oscar picture necessarily. Step Brothers. Thank you so much. A, a collector kiss me to this room because I, <laughs> I, I love that film so much and I genuinely think that the performances of Will Ferrell and the legendary John C. Riley, they're, they're equally legendary the Will Ferrell, Will but <laughs> uh, are amazing, are so good. They are so convincing as these 40-year-old men who haven't conformed to the kind of you know social expectations placed on them since time began (laughs) and they are like lovably idiotic and they think in you know an unmatched way they look at the world through this like crazy kaleidoscope uh and it's so funny and it's one of the most quotable films i think i've ever seen and when I see it, even people who like comedy are like, oh, it's a bit silly now. <laughs> and like, I get it. It, it, it is really silly. I, I actually prefer things that are a bit more grounded, things that are a bit more realistic. Yeah, like Narnia. Like yeah. Narnia. <laughs> like Narnia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's important to mention this has no mice fighting in it whatsoever. None. So um, I still enjoyed it. I still loved it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no swashbuckling on, on ships. But uh, I just think it's really, really funny. And I think it, it's probably got you know, 30% on Rotten Tomatoes or something, but I think it's amazing. Tell me about, uh, it has in it a woman I think is amazing, Catherine Hearn. Yes. So funny. Yes. So funny in it. And I believe she's in We're the, We're the Millers. With she's you. in We're the Millers, yeah. Is she n- all right? Oh, she's a mate. Catherine Hearn is uh, one of my favorite people I've ever worked with. Oh, thank God. She's, so, <laughs> what'd you say? I said, thank God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Been awful. She's, yeah, she's amazing. Uh, so funny as well. Um, virtually impossible to work with, though, in the sense that she's so funny and she comes up with so many different alts that you never know what's coming. It's really hard to keep a straight face with Catherine. I remember her throwing out, you know, a million different versions of the same line just to keep it interesting for us. And at one point, I was like, I can't even look at her because, <laughs> you know, I'm finding it too hard to stay through it. And I also think that um, the woman who plays Nancy, who is uh, Will Ferrell's mother in this film, is the lawyer in Philadelphia? She plays the lawyer in Philadelphia? Hang on. Will Farrell's mum. So Will Farrell's mum in this. Is Mary Steenberger. No? Yeah, and is she in Philadelphia? Or have I just massively embarrassed myself? I think she she is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Labyrinth. So that's uh <laughs> that's uh so that's uh that's well that's just an unnecessary link for you. But uh yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, completely different performances. And I think I empathize with her because I am absolutely her in the sense that I'm that person who's working with very funny people just trying not to laugh. She's trying not to laugh the entire movie. Yeah. She's dealing with Will Ferrell, vomiting comic genius, and she's just trying her best not to laugh her guts out of her mouth. You're very funny. <laughs> what? You're very funny. <laughs> uh, I'm, what I'm is... It's interest. a lovely... Uh, uh, yeah, it's a funny film. I, I, I'm, I'm, such a, I'm such a big fan. And I know yeah. I, it just, it's just one of those films that's not... Not critically like spoken about, and I get why, but I think people <laughs> I think people overlook how genius the performances are. I think yeah. like you could yeah. method act as a forty year old who still lives with their mother and not produce a, a performance as good as Will Farrell or uh, or John C. Riley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was well on my way actually <laughs> to method acting as someone who was still living with their mum. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is the film that you used to love years ago? You loved it. You were always banging on about it, and then you've watched it recently and you've gone, oh shit. That is not dated well. My one was, I, <laughs> I genu, I genuinely used to like sincerely as a like as a twelve year old who thought he'd seen all the films, was like um, the island. I think is my <laughs> greatest film. I forgot about the island. I li- mate without a sh- without batting an eyelid. You say that's the greatest film ever made. Right. So remind me, the island is like a film of two halves. In the first half. They're trapped in the Matrix yeah. on an island, right? Yeah. But they're all in white. Yeah. And they have to like, and he's going, it's not real. And she's going, I- isn't it? And yeah. then they break out and then they run for an hour. Yeah. Is that it? That's the island. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty much. Okay. That, that, is a, that is a really good summation of what it is. It's um, like the Matrix, but it's all white. 
it's all, it's all, yeah, yeah. It's like, a, yeah, exactly. It's like an all white matrix. Yeah. And it's, it, but yeah, it's, it's really bizarre. And there are some really strange things. I think what I, what I came into contact with, and I watched it again last night. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I was sad. like, oh, bless me. I was like, I've, um, it, I, I think my suspension of disbelief, my ability to suspend my disbelief was so much greater at, at 12, 13, as you can imagine. And so I just forgave the fact that like Ewan McGregor traveled through an entire skyscraper while on this like flying bike thing. He just travels through the entire skyscraper and then they sort of come out the other side of the skyscraper and he sort of goes like, oh. <laughs> like, like, like he got splashed with some cold water or something. It's like you just travel through a building, um, and they they sustain unbelievable injuries. At one point, they fall from a like forty foot ceiling straight onto some like bodies. Uh, there are like bodies in hospital beds, like fill, filling this room, and they fall from the height of the ceiling, which is about forty feet down onto these bodies and again they just sort of get up like nothing happens and inexplicably it's just raining indoors <laughs> <laughs> it's just, no no explanation for it it is just raining and it's just I think it's just Michael Bay just going you know what would be cool on this scene <laughs> if they were wet is it <laughs> isn't the island Michael Bay's like deep one like the one he was <laughs> like <laughs> no I mean it I think it was he was like I'll do a it's one true. for them one for me and this was his <laughs> This was his, I'm using my brain here. Yeah. This is so, oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I didn't think about it like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it was. Like, he was like, what if we were all on an island? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, and there was just, there was a lot, there was a lot of that watching it back. I was like, okay, I forgave a lot. Um, and it's funny, you know, uh, there's a, the, f the very first episode of Black Mirror. Yes. With Daniel Kaluuya, who's the best actor in Britain right now. Um, yeah. 100%. Uh, uh, the first episode of Black Mirror seems to actually vaguely lend from some of the things that are in... Do you mean 50 Million Merits, or whatever it's called? The island. What, yes. Where they like, have to do the X Factor and... Like, I was watching the island yeah. and I was like, I'm not, Charlie Brooker's a genius. I'm not saying that he went, Nick and that, that's genius. <laughs> like, Charlie Brooker's not short on ideas. But I was watching it and I was like, oh, Black Mirror is just a really great, well-executed version of, of the this. Island. We, yeah. You're saying Charlie without Brooker all the silly... from Michael Bay? <laughs> <laughs> no, just without all the silly, like, you know, traveling through yeah. um, the other side of skyscrapers and, uh, you know. Holy moly. Yeah, and just, yeah, that's what I think. I regret saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Give uh, back your BAFTAs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, you're fraud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. What was your other one? Did you have another one? You said there were... Um, oh, that I watched and doesn't hold you up don't anymore. Like anymore. Do you know what I was talking? I was watching. I was watching the rugby just earlier in the pub with some friends, and one of them went, "Oh, are you are you going to say goal?" Oh. And I was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh, and I've got a mate in goal, so I don't want to." Oh, but yeah. goal, I, and I think that's just because CGI again. Mm. You just you know it was like, "Oh yeah, sure, all right, he's on the pitch," and then now you watch it, you go, "Oh, he's not. No, he's nowhere near." <laughs> A football. Uh, also, just kick a ball. They're not expensive. Do you know? <laughs> Why are you CGI in a ball? You're so right. There's a ball. I'll give you a ball. That's you can have my ball for the day. Give it back. It's just it's bad weird. budgeting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Goal, goal could have been better had they had a better budget manager. <laughs> that would have been it. But they had got apparently... Got cars. <laughs> uh, we ain't got any footballs. Yeah. So. Apparently the catering was incredible on goal. <laughs> like one of the best. Yeah. Great answer. <laughs> um, now, this is my personal favorite question of all the questions, which is, what is the film that means the most to you? Not necessarily because the film, film might be shit, but because of the memory you have around that film. It might have been a first date, it might have been a day you got a job, it might have been someone died, something that you will always remember that film because of that day. Um, the first, f uh, okay, so the first time I met my now girlfriend was a year ago, just over a year ago. Sorry, fellas. And the first, <laughs> the, fir <laughs> <laughs> the first, um, <laughs> the first, huge people just walking <laughs> out. There we go. Ah, fuck that. <laughs> I bought a ticket. You know, forget it. Sorry, continue. Um, but no, this is this is when we were we were back as friends. So it wasn't you know 
thankfully it wasn't our kind of first date because it would have made for the worst first date ever. But we watched You Were Never Really Here. Oh, great um, film. Yeah, which... Not a date movie. It's not a date movie. <laughs> Don't let that romantic red flare at the top of the poster confuse you because a little bit down there is a hammer. Um, <laughs> there's also a, a girl in need of being saved from pretty uh, terrifying circumstances. It's Lynn Ramsey as a director is so phenomenal. Mm. Uh, saw it at the BFI. Lovely. Shout out to the BFI. Um, and um, what I'm just trying to work out if I saw it in this room. I didn't see it in this room. That would have been very weird. Um, but saw it at the BFI. Watched the Q and A with Lynn Ramsey afterwards. Oh, wow. Um, while sat next to uh, my now girlfriend, and we just like marvelled at how amazing she was, and and she divulged all of these stories about Joaquin Phoenix, who's an actor who I'm obsessed with, um, and I know I might be deemed, I might be deemed to be very hypocritical here because I know there is he talk of him being quite method yeah. or whatever, but she was really interesting in her sort of discussions about working with Joaquin, and he's one of those actors that is so good that I watch and I'm like. Either I just keep going forever in a useless pursuit of what he does, <laughs> or I just give up because he's magic. Like he's someone I watch and I go, "You're not acting. You're just I don't know what you are. Like you're this cosmic talent." I think he's phenomenal. Um, and she said he was great to work with, but he was brutally defensive of his character. He was like, you know, if something was bullshit, if he felt like there was a prop or a suggestion or something that was in any way detracting from realism, he didn't even want to entertain, like would throw it out. And I don't think that's to say that he wasn't collaborative or he wasn't up for the discussion, because I think that's key, regardless of how big or great you are. Like mm -hmm. I think you know you should always maintain that. But he was just very, very defensive of what was real with everything. He wouldn't, he wouldn't let decisions get made for him. Any decision, big or small, that w may even vaguely be associated with his character or his arc, he was pedantic about making sure everything was real and would this exist in real life and you know and I, I respect that I think that's wicked so you went on a first date uh, with a woman to see a film about a man killing paedophiles with a hammer and you held hands and thought this is going to last <laughs> 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 she said oh lovely choice thank you <laughs> I love you we, we were friends for about six months uh, okay. After that, bef before you know, we became a, a couple, as they say. Mm -hmm. But maybe in that six months, she was just reflecting. Going, <laughs> I don't know what date two is going to be like. <laughs> um, yeah, terrified. But um, yeah, I, but I will always remember that 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 film for that reason. You were like date two. I got tickets to climax. <laughs> 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 um, exactly. That's lovely uh, in a way. Um, all right, here's a, here's one. I feel oh, awkward. Um, Look me in the eyes. Yeah. Oh, I, feel, I can't do it to your eyes. Uh, <laughs> what, what is the film you found the sexiest? Oh. <laughs> the, what was it? Uh, it? So this is like the first film that I remember being a little bit sexy. Is that it? It's, it's your interpretation. Or, okay. It's a film where you thought, oh, hello. Oh, hello something's yeah. happening. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think this, this film I'm mentioning because I want to... I, I just want to talk about it, okay. and it, I think a lot of people remember it partly for this reason. If you saw it as a as a as a silly little boy <laughs> at the age that I saw it, Titanic. Hang on. <laughs> Does that mean you don't want me to ask the question? That's a safe word. Oh no no! Oh, I you, want to talk, you about, want to talk about it. Okay. I want to talk about it. Sorry. Yeah. Titanic. Forget no, it. No, Move yeah, on. Yeah. Uh, just scream iceberg and walk off. Right. I I uh, I remember. This being the first time that I saw nudity on screen, like in my mum and dad's house. And I always remember like watching Titanic and just being like, please don't come on in the drawing scene. Just <laughs> please don't come on when, when, when Jack is drawing Rose. But I remember that being the first time I saw anything remotely sexual on TV mm. and being like, wow. And it being really kind of beautiful as well and, and like very kind of tasteful. And that was maybe my argument, you know, as a, as a kid to my mother. It's tasteful, mum. <laughs> um. Put it away. But I'm doing it tastefully. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry. You, you were talking Sorry. about a paintbrush, right? Yeah, you were talking yeah, yeah, paintbrush. Yeah, yeah. Paintbrush. You were just painting yeah. the TV. Well, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Painting my masterpiece. Yeah. My mum on her knees with the VHS. No, 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 you're not. <laughs> um... 
Yeah, anyway. and and I just I I love I love the film. I think uh, DiCaprio and Kate Winslet at the heart of it are just so amazing. I think it's also I've read quite a lot about the the shooting process of this film. <coughs> Excuse me, and it I'm not getting emotional. Um, <laughs> that sounded like I was about to cry. Um, it's all right. She I was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I read a lot about the shooting process of the film and just how problematic it was and how many uh you know obstacles they came up against um crazy crazy stories the 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 project literally nearly sank like yeah. multiple multiple times they faced untold challenges as far as making a film is concerned james cameron at one point like was like i'm doing it for free we're taking my fee and we're putting that in the budget or whatever did that which isn't heroic by any means because he, he's fine for money i think but <laughs> they, they and and like they had all kinds of crazy they got things spiked right the crew spiked the water do you know that did that happen that they were so angry the crew because it went on forever that, that someone put acid in the water cooler. Do you know that? No. It's like Climax is so dark and I never slept since I read that story. <laughs> but yeah, I someone spiked the whole... So for a day, they were all going, fucking hell, it's like being in Narnia. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. Oh, yeah, no. so all that. I didn't, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, yeah just there were ju just like so many stories about how difficult it was. But at the core of it is this incredibly real just like magnetic connection between these two human beings while the room is like filling up with water and they've got one take to do yeah. it that you don't question for a second that they're like madly in love and they're going to do everything they can to like get out and i just think they must have been under so much pressure to perform you know that connection with that level of authenticity and they did it and it's just a marvel at that i think that's crazy um and when when we were all complaining when when I did the Revenant we were all complaining I was ask about this, yeah. right when we were all complaining about how difficult that was and we're like this got to be the most difficult job in history Leo was like nah um, <laughs> that's cute and all but nah uh, you know because this was they were always wet this was yeah yeah o always and cold whereas on Revenant we were just always cold the Revenant stresses me out worrying about how cold you were <laughs> for the whole film i just go fights must have been horrible yeah. every day imagine my so mum cold. imagine my mum my mum's yeah. yeah yeah she really dedicated cool. her life to making sure i would like had a coat on when i went outside <laughs> so you won't feel the benefit when you do the revenant <laughs> <laughs> um oh. great lovely answer classy that is a classy answer okay thanks well done <laughs> Um, what is the film that you most relate to? Where you watch it and you go, that's me, that is. It might be the character, it might be the world, it might be the atmosphere of it. Something about it, you go, that's the most film me. I um, think School of Rock. It's one of my favourite films. <laughs> I love it. So, and they're doing it uh, on... They're doing it in the theatre at the moment. They're doing I've it seen on... it, it's brilliant. Is it? Really? <laughs> yeah. It's really good. <laughs> Amazing. It's really good. Um, yeah, Zach, particularly in the School of Rock. Um, I. Oh, mate, that's you, is it? That yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Oh, God, that um, breaks my heart. It, well, tr truthfully, yeah. if he was me, Zach would have like, um, like a stripy polo shirt <laughs> and like a Casio wristwatch and like a massive backpack that made me look like a tortoise. Mm. Um, but but emotionally, I think being that. That kid. The reason I chose is being that kid who, at school, like academically, like wasn't necessarily clicking, like didn't enjoy school, socially found it awkward and tough to navigate. But then had a creative outlet. Um, Zach's being music, mine being drama, and then having a teacher that comes in to your world and just blows it wide open. That teacher for me was Laura Lawson, my drama teacher, and she was the creator of School of Comedy. Um, so the parallels between this and School of Rock are kind of quite strong. She, w Laura, who performed as Laura Black, was oh, my Jack really? Black. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Um, and she just gave me confidence and, you know, told me that, like, there was more to life than, you know, maths and other things that I didn't understand and, and you know, gave me the opportunity to perform. So, yeah. Your yeah. Zach attack. I <laughs> I mean, I wish I could. I wish I could play a musical instrument. Um, right. But yeah, yeah, I really. So I really related to his experience at school of being kind of socially repressed and then having a creative outlet, an extracurricular activity, kind of draw you out of your shell and and make you a more confident, happy person for sure. 
Are you going to make me cry? <laughs> Uh, Just don't say Philadelphia. <laughs> really good, really good answer. Well done. Uh, what, what is the film that you think objectively is the greatest film of all time? Might not be your favourite, mm. but aliens come. They go, what cinema are you guys? This. Oh, what is it? And they go, we've heard about this film called The Island. I go, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I was ages ago. I was ages ago. Yeah. I've changed my mind. <laughs> I've changed my mind. <laughs> um, I. Do you know what? Uh, it's it's what I think objectively is the greatest film of all time, and I think also what is my personal favorite film okay. of all time, um, Good Will Hunting. Mm. I think, mm. <laughs> and I I love it so much. Again, Robin Williams um, being incredible. Um, it's a film that I, I've watched so many so many times. Very inspiring as well, hearing that Ben Affleck and and, mm. and uh, Matt Damon had such a huge hand in, in writing it um, and, and coming up with the, the story. Um, and I just think, yeah, it, it taught me a lot as well, I think, about being emotionally vulnerable and, and sensitive as a as a man as well, like not buying into the, the sort of, you know, toxic um, expectations that come with being masculine, that you don't show emotion, you don't open up, you don't, you know, talk about your feelings and um you know i also received uh therapy for anxiety and, and, and depression when i was younger and so watching those scenes unfurl between matt damon and and uh um robin williams's characters had a added sort of uh specialness to it for me um and i just wanted to be in the room with those two men discussing you know their vulnerabilities and uh, it was just great to watch. Uh, can I ask you something very personal, and you might Titanic this. Yeah. I, uh, I also have seen a therapist. Sure, there's nothing wrong with that. But because of this film, do you not find, particularly when I started therapy, I just kept waiting for them to go, it's not your fault. <laughs> I, kept thinking like, I kept thinking, like, when are we going to shortcut? Like, I know the end. <laughs> Get on with it. It's not my fault. It's so funny. <laughs> but then she was like, I think it is your fault. <laughs> and I'm like, Forget it. I want my money back. That's so funny. <laughs> the, yeah. The other thing I would tell do you know the um, story about the how when they took the script around for this? Do you know this about the secret scene they put in? Tell me. I, I know a little bit I'll about it. I'll tell you if you don't journey. know this story, that Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, and I know this from, often you'll, you'll write a script and you send it to people and you have meetings with them, and then you go in the room and they go, oh, you're a genius, we love it, and you always know they've not read it. <laughs> and I was in LA once and, I, and I, I went to meet this person about the script and he went, love your script, buddy, you're a genius. And I looked in his eyes and I thought, you definitely haven't read it. And I said, what's your favorite bit? And without missing a beat, he went, the ending. <laughs> the ending, and I was like, I hate you. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, when they were doing Good Will Hunting, they were sending the script around as a test for how they'd know if people were actually reading it there was a scene that they wrote in the middle of two of the therapy scenes where out of nowhere, it said, interior bedroom, uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon's characters, fuck. <laughs> and then it went back to the therapy. So they'd know when they'd go into a meeting that someone would go, we really love the script, but it's quite weird, this sudden scene of... And if no one said that, they'd sit there going, all right, you're full of shit. It's a good trick. <laughs> so now so I put that in all my scripts. In all ben Affleck stuff. fucks Matt Damon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two new questions. We'll do them quickly. You've got a fly that's... I know, there's a fly here. I feel, like, I feel like Belloc in Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having to continue he's while been, a that's fly... That's like the third time he's come yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Don't he's cut. Just just, I'll keep going. <laughs> um, what is, to you, the best opening scene or sequence in a film? Um, I really like There Will Be Blood as an opening Correct. sequence. Correct. <laughs> Gosh, I need some points with you because yeah, yeah. I was really in trouble with Snatch. <laughs> You're winning it back. I was, yeah. Um, Love it. Amazing. I, again, another uh, a person who is reportedly a, a method actor, yeah. but, but such a phenomenal. Turns out we love method actors. We <laughs> actually <laughs> love them. We love them. It's when they're not journey. playing wankers. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, as Daniel Plainview, like just incredible. Um, and the opening's amazing. Mm. There's. I don't think any accompanying music, there's no dialogue no for dialogue. at least... I think it's 27 minutes. Tw yeah. No dialogue. And I just... To be exact. Captivated. Yeah. And it's not, it's not as potentially, um, what's the word, like pretentious or, or yeah. as it could be. It's fascinating. Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson is Paul Thomas Anderson, so uh, naturally like, it's visually beautiful. And um, I just remember just like... I, I actually remember... 
I think it's the, the it's the only film that I watch and I rewind just to watch the beginning again. Like I'll get yeah, to yeah, yeah. like around thirty minutes and be like, oh, I just watched the, <laughs> and I'll take it back right to the beginning because I just think it's so so beautiful. Um, I love it. Yeah, love that. Film. You and you approve. Hundred percent. You get a hundred percent there. Get in. That's a great film. Yeah, it's a uh, fresh choice. And what is your best closing sequence to a film? So, uh, so having said, use the word pretentious. My my choice is yeah. arguably a little bit pretentious. Because well, it. it's a one shot film. So the whole film is the closing sequence. Is and the opening. Yeah. And clever. the middle, if you think about it. Clever answer. You're really pretentious. Clever. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Victoria. I fucking love Victoria. You're back in the game. Yeah! Um, love Victoria. I just think it's amazing. Um, have you I seen this? You must see it. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's, uh, how many people have seen Was that like a 50-50 almost? Yeah. That sounded like a 50-50. Well, yeah. you've all got your know oh. what to do tonight. I, I honestly, I'm going to go as far as say this is in my top 10 films yeah. of all time. It's brilliant. Um, it's amazing. It's a one-shot film. As I understand it, they took five days to shoot it. I think they did three takes and they got it on the second take or something like that. No, I think it's the no. third. I think the first oh, they take, they were all so scared that they did it, but he said that it was all a bit too reserved. Right. The second take, he said, loosen up, and they went mental, and he went, all right, not that much. <laughs> and then the third take is the one. Sorry, it makes sense that they ended yeah, on yeah. the third take. <laughs> it's not like after they did a, like, two-hour one-shot film. Yeah. Should we just do one for gags? <laughs> um, yeah. One for safety. Yeah. Just try something different on this one. Um, yeah. yeah. That makes much more yeah, sense. Yeah. Um, that's why you host it. And I. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I just, I love it. Uh, some of the most like, naturalistic performances I've seen. Yeah. It's an incredible feat of camera work. I think camera operators don't get enough credit. Mm. We're always talking about the directors and, the, and often the DOPs. Camera operators, anyone in the camera department, like, salute, I think. Uh, work so incredibly hard without the credit they deserve. You know what always stressed me out about Victoria? If you haven't seen Victoria, so it's a one shot, but it goes, it isn't like just in one room, it goes all over town and helicopters appear, like it's really complicated. And there's a scene quite late on, it's not really a spoiler, but they go into a, a flat and there's like two people who've maybe got two lines who are sort of like, oh, surprised to see these criminals in their flat. And I thought, being them, being the lead is easy because you can improvise and you're playing for it. But if you're two hours into the film, there's someone, like an AD behind the door, he's going, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fuck this up because we've done all of it. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And then the door opens and you go, fuck, oh shit, sorry. Uh, it's and they have so to start. True. I mean, it's <laughs> I yeah. be, They should get the Oscars. Uh, the, that's, the that two. is true. Imagine if we were to ruin the entire yeah. film. I think um, is the that. The pressure you'd be behind that door. Yeah. <laughs> they're coming, they're coming. Zach Galifianakis talks about it on Birdman. All he right, talks yeah. about being at the stage door, like listening in to this amazing scene and it's like, you know, seven minutes long and he's like, oh shit, oh shit, <laughs> yeah. oh shit, you know. And all he's got, to, and that has cuts, obviously, Berman has cuts, whereas this truly isn't stitched together. It is yeah. one, sh which is just mind blowing. But he's there at the, you know, the point of the stitch and it relies on him opening the door and saying his line right. And he's and saying his line right and he says that his line was just something really basic. But the pure pressure of messing up this yeah. incredibly complex seven minute scene meant that every time he opened the door, he just went, <laughs> you know, like Zach, you know. Um, but it's an amazing film and uh, Leia Costa is the lead and she's incredible. Yeah. Um, and Sebastian Schiffer, who's the director, he's got a film called Roads coming out oh, yeah? soon. Um, yeah, which um, is 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 due to be really great. But it's it's beautiful, and it's 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 you know it's a rare thing. Few people pull off you know a technical feat like this, um, and they do it really really beautifully. And her performance is outstanding. So, and I also think it's one of the only times. Often I see like long one takes and I think, yeah, it's really great, but we're all watching it going, oh, you're doing a one take, that's impressive. Like, it's a bit, uh, you just sort of think it's impressive, but it doesn't pull you in. Totally. But this one is like justified, because I think for the whole time you're holding your breath going, fuck it out, yeah. for two and a half hours. And, a, and beautiful in. moments where you forget, right, yeah. that it is. Yeah. Oh, we love that film. Oh, we love that film. Um, there's, there's also, I was just gonna say, there's, on, also yeah, a, there's also a crazy Never moment. Stop. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you don't have to kick me off. <laughs> But there is, a, there is an amazing, this is me getting a bit geeky, but there's yeah. an amazing moment where they're about, and I don't want to ruin it for everyone, but they're about an hour and like, I want to say they're, 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 they're effectively three quarters of the way through the film mm. on what we now know as their third take. And 
as I understand it, Leia takes a wrong turn in the car and starts driving to an area that they are not set up for. Shit. And the pandemonium that breaks out in this car is 100% real because it's like, you must have fucked the whole movie. <laughs> but obviously no one can say that. And as I understand it, the director is in the boot of the car with the monitor going, fuck, <laughs> she's going the wrong way, <laughs> fuck. Uh. And just watching it and knowing that is just like the most exciting thing in the world. And then I can't imagine the party <laughs> they have when they pulled it off, but yeah. yeah. Wow, great, great answer. Um, now looking at the time, it's, it's, it's nearly time to go to the audience, I think. Now, um, Will Porter, your favorite film is Good Will Hunting, correct? That is correct. 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 Um, now, Will Porter, you've been really wonderful. You have. I couldn't have asked for more. Um, the thing is, when you went for that swim in the sea mm. and you got seasick and you thought, oh, oh there's some turtles, and yeah. then the turtles grabbed you and held you down yeah. because of something you may have done in the past, <laughs> and, they, and they held you down and you, and you, you drowned, and, but, in your lo- but what happened was when you inhaled that last bit of water, it really made your body massive. Like you sort of swelled up oh. and also we didn't find you for quite a while. And so you've been right. eating, there were like d- dead things inside you. Like it was oh. a lot, it was a lot more than we were planning for. Bits right. of sharks. Anyway, we managed to get you out, but you're a fucking mess, mess I'll be honest. It. And we put you in the coffin, but there's just more, like I think we've got a bit of coral in there. There's too much oh. stuff. We, s- we jam you in the coffin, but there's not, there's no room for all this stuff. There's a now only room for one DVD that we can slide in. Okay. And on the other side, there's movie night every night, and one night it's your movie night. So what DVD are you taking? Am I, <coughs> am I allowed to take a film that I previously mentioned? Yeah. I think for pure nostalgia and uh, to hang out with my, my hero in, yeah. in the, the, the afterlife, I, I'm taking Hook. God bless you. Taking Hook. It's a great answer. Going to Neverland. And no one else has taken Hook. I'm, ta- I'm glad. They're going to be very grateful. I'm t- yeah, taking Neverland. I thought you were going to say, purely to hang out with my hero, I'm taking the island. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just to sort of, I guess, wrap up the podcast bit, we please give a massive round of applause for the absolutely brilliant Will Poulter. Thank you, Brett Goldstein. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. You've Thank been you, excellent.